Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name's Katie and I upload book related videos every single Wednesday and today I'm very excited because this isn't actually a video I was originally planning on filming but I got so many like tweets and comments from you guys asking me to review The Handmaid's Tale TV show so I'm finally going to do that today. And the reason I originally wasn't going to talk about this is because although it's one of my favorite books and I have it right here, I haven't actually read it in like five years so the book's fuzzy so I was like I'm not even going to be able to really compare the two so instead of doing that like I did for Big Little Lies. I'm gonna just kind of react to the show and talk about it. My videos also normally never ever ever have spoilers like 99.9% .9 of the time but since I'm just reacting to the show and I'm not reviewing it this video is just gonna be filled with spoilers so if you haven't seen the show go watch it it's amazing and then come back and watch this video. So my first comment was that I really thought some of the most well done characters even though they're you know fucking evil were actually Serena Joy and the commander because although they're awful at the same time, particularly Serena Joy, I think they're also kind of like a fascinating evil, if that makes sense. And I think what's also interesting is obviously by the end of the series, you fucking hate the commander. He's disgusting, essentially the Antichrist, you know, very awful person. But if you haven't read the book and you're only one episode into the show, the commander is almost a kind of ambiguous evil. And you know, when he's inviting her down to play Scrabble. In fact, that reminds me, I was having a conversation, what was it, like a month or two back. And I was talking with one of my friends who hasn't read the book and she made some comment and she was like oh I really like the main guy in the show and me and my other friend um, who were more caught up we were like four or five episodes in we were like oh you mean Nick and and she was like no the commander and we were both like ooh whoa, what? And I guess from her point of view, you know, if you're only one to two episodes in, even though, you know, obviously he's helped start all of this and overthrowing the government because he's doing these little tiny nice things for June, I can see how it kind of messes with your head. And I thought Serena Joy was interesting because on the one hand, what she stood for and what she's done is obviously awful. It's interesting that a woman who was like clearly in the past kind of a leader and would do all this public speaking and would write books would set up a society that is so horrific for women. All also, did anybody else back when she was doing all this public speaking and writing her books? I kind of pictured her as like a really intense like Tommy Loren type. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I was kind of picturing. Also, the most satisfying part of the series was when she tells off her husband and says like, obviously you couldn't have been the one to impregnate her because you're weak. Very, very satisfying. Alexa Spladell, I was super impressed by because I'm gonna be honest, in the entirety of the Gilmore Girls, as much as I love the show, there's never a moment where I was like, oh, Alexa Spladell is a great actress. But for me, a lot of her scenes affected me more so than any of the other characters, particularly when the woman that she loved is hung. Like, I don't think any other part of the series affected me more than that. My one, my one kind of main critique of the show would just be the fact that consistently they keep making you think a main character is going to die and then they don't. And I know you might be like, Katie, well, isn't that a good thing? You should be happy that like none of the characters are dying off. But it got to a point for me at least where like the tension of the show was less just because I was like, well, no one's ever gonna die. Because if you look back on it, first you think Alexis Fidel is dead, but then it's like, no, she's just undergone this horrific surgery. Then you think Mora is dead, but then of course in the beginning you think Nick is dead, but then it turns out no, he's in Canada. And then you think Alexis Fidel is gonna die again because she ran over the people with the car, but instead they just kind of take her away. Then you think Janine is gonna die from jumping off the bridge, but she survives. Then you think Janine's gonna die from the stoning, but they don't kill her. So I was just like, is no one ever gonna die in this show? Okay, and I have to say, did anybody else think when Janine was brought out to be stoned, I thought for sure it was going to be Nick that they were going to bring out and my heart was just like pounding. And One of you guys had asked what I thought about there being a season two since the show essentially ended where the book ended. Now I will say my feelings about this differ very much than from how I feel about Big Little Lies. If you guys didn't watch my review, I loved Big Little Lies, but it makes me kind of sad they're doing a season two since I thought season one and just the, and the book overall just wrapped up so nicely. Since The Handmaid's Tale book is open-ended, I actually think that there's a lot more that they could do and I'm really excited for a season two. Also, Elizabeth Moss's acting is just insane. When you really look at the show, she didn't have that much dialogue, but just her facial expressions and her eyes, I feel like it's say a million words. And if you love Elizabeth Moss as an actress, I highly recommend checking out Top of the Lake. I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix. That's a murder mystery series and it's so good. And season two, the trailer finally came out a little bit ago. You guys, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, please go watch The Handmaid's Tale if you haven't yet. And regardless of whether you've 
you've watched the show or not, I do highly recommend reading the book. The show essentially just has a lot more plot than the book does, but the book is just superb, so please go ahead and read it if you haven't. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. My next video is going to be a review of one of my new favorite psychological thrillers, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye.